those of you who have your Bibles, your Bibles, your tablets, your pens, your pencils, your eyeglasses, or whatever else they put a Bible in this week, I want to turn to the book of Joshua. chapter 24, Joshua is continuing his final charge to the children of Israel. You picture this old man trying to pass on what he has learned to the next generation. Similar to how many of our parents and grandparents tried to do, the, do with us. Winston Churchill once wrote, those who fail to learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat. Joshua, knowing that he had more days behind him than in front of him, wanted to share his life lesson with the ones who were left to carry on. Joshua had been a faithful servant to the Lord. He had done a good job, but now he was an old man. You can imagine him being bent over, hair gray, voice probably shaking and trembling as he's nearing death. But Joshua gathered the heads of the tribe of Israel, the elders, the judges, and the other officers, and wanted them to present themselves before God. And Joshua said to the people, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old times. Even to Har, the father of Abraham, father under the car. And they served other gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led them throughout the land of Canaan and multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. And I gave to Esau the area of the Mount Sarah to possess it. And Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. And I sent Moses also in air, and I plagued Egypt according to that which was among them. And after I brought you out, and I brought your fathers out of Egypt, I and came and you came unto the sea, 
and the Egyptians pursued after your father with the chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought you from that other side of the sea. When we're reading in these scriptures, Joshua starts off speaking in third person. But as the scriptures go on forward, Joshua begins to speak in first person. Mm -hmm. Meaning that he's no longer speaking on his own behalf, uh -huh. but he's speaking as an interpreter for God through prophecy. Uh -huh. Having gone into first person as God declares, I destroyed them uh -huh. and I delivered you out of their hand. Mm -hmm. When I was young, they used to have commercials by E.F. Hutton. And in those commercials, they say when E.F. Hutton speaks, Everybody listens. <laughs> My thing is that how we give this much power to a man, and we're willing to listen to a man about some investments, but don't want to hear the voice of God. My God. Sometimes it's hard to accept what God is trying to tell us. So we get a little hard-headed and Instead of listening to what God is telling you, because he's going to tell your spirit first. Mm -hmm. He's not just going to throw something at you. He's going to put it in your spirit. But a lot of times when God start, tries to put stuff in our spirit, we start to try to turn the other way because it ain't what we want to do. Right, right. The choice is yours. Mm -hmm. Joshua stands before these people. And he declares the marvelous works of God. And then he challenges them to choose this day whom they will serve. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that God gives us the power of choice. Right. Mm -hmm. He doesn't force us to do what we should do. Mm -hmm. He gives us the choice to follow him or follow the devil. Mm -hmm. Well, many of us we say, bye bye. We say, we follow Jesus. We say, we follow God. Mm -hmm. But every chance we get to show our allegiance to the devil, we do. Mm -hmm. How many times do we go to the club and Enjoy the club. <laughs> Stay a little late at the club. But Sunday morning can't get up for church. My, my. But this example is also followed in other days. Because we'll go to the club. Stay late at the club. And get up even earlier and go to work. Right. Come on, preacher. Because it's easy to follow the path that the devil has laid out for us mm -hmm. as opposed to following the path that God would have us to be on. My mind. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. A man can live after his own flesh and that can become his God. Mm -hmm. A man can be obsessed by his own desires for success. Mm -hmm. And that can become his God. A man can get so obsessed with the desire of wealth that that becomes his God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you must choose God and who you will serve. Mm -hmm. Because the money that you make on that job right. can be taken away on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. right. yes. See, we, we, we come to we come up with excuses why we shouldn't follow God. Mm -hmm. We we uh say, well, I was planning to go to church. Mm -hmm. But man, you know my car dirty. Oh. My Lord. <laughs> I, I gotta I gotta wash my car. I ain't I wouldn't wash my car all week. So. Yeah. Today I'm gonna wash my car. Well, you know, I ain't been able to get that grass cut this week. Come on, 
going to break up. So I'm going yeah. I'm to I'm cut my grass today yeah. because it's the only day I got to cut my grass. My, my. I, I, uh, I, I was planning to go to church Sunday. Yes. But my favorite team got a game at what? 1 o'clock today. Oh, and and I, just, I, just, I, just, I just can't see myself. I'm not going to be able to sit in church and, 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 and listen to the preacher and the singing because my mind is on something else. And I, 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 I want to I wanna go to church, but these other things are pulling me. Those are becoming you your vices or your God. Great. The choice is yours. My God. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Neither. Neither are ways. Your ways, my ways, saith the Lord. Amen. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God knew by giving us choice that we would separate ourselves from him. He knew that we would get caught up in the world. You have a lot of friends when you're in the world. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. When you when you want to drink, you can always find somebody to drink with you. Amen. These younger folks when they when they want to smoke. <laughs> Come on, preacher. <laughs> when they want to smoke, they can always find somebody. <laughs> Ah, uh, smoke with them. Yes. My God. I hear you preach. When, when I was a teenager, early 20s, they had a song that said, I got five on it. Yes. Yes. Amen. The reason they got five on it is because they know somebody else. Got, got another five. <laughs> and we got a dime. Yes. Oh, no. yes. All right, yeah. uh, but when it comes to going to church, my God. Come on, come on. <laughs> you had all the people there when it was time to drink. Oh, yeah. Man, I got the cups. <laughs> <laughs> Since y'all saved, I'm just going to deal with me for a second. 
I've been in some clubs where you, you have to slide and, and scoop yeah. <laughs> to, to get around <laughs> in the train in, in the club. Yes. 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 But when you come to church, you got to play the You can walk around heaven all day. My God. All day. But you're going to stand up in hell mm. in one spot. Mm. And I can tell you something about heat. Mm. <laughs> when you go outside in the heat, the first thing you want to do is move. <laughs> you don't want to stand still in heat. You're trying to move to shift some air or something. Oh, God show us some kind of mercy, so I'm moving around. Yes. But we come to church and we can prop our feet up. Mm -hmm. We can just about lay out on the pew and not touch nobody. Jesus. Because the choice of coming to church and giving your life to God is totally different than being out in the world. Yes. The world makes it so easy for you to do wrong. Amen. Right. They'll do everything they can to take you away from the path of God. Amen. Right. You got friends around you who will take you to the club. Uh -huh. They'll take you to the liquor store. Uh -huh. They'll take you to their weed bag. <laughs> He got better stuff. Oh, my God. For a cheaper price. Yeah. <laughs> and we jump in the car. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> to save two dollars. Jesus. And it cost twenty dollars extra in gas <laughs> to get there. <laughs> But we have to get back to the basics of worshiping God. When I was younger, we'd have films, and we would hold up the flowers. Miss Betsy gave the flowers. We hold the flowers. You sit there and be. 75 flowers at the funeral. Mm. 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 Well, when funeral homes decided that we wouldn't read the flowers no more, Miss mm -hmm. Betsy no longer mm -hmm. bought flowers for folks' funeral. Mm -hmm. The reason Miss Betsy and others bought flowers for funeral was to go to the funeral and hear folks call their name out so they could get the praise of giving the flowers. Mm -hmm. But once you stop giving them their praise, Come on now. they no longer bought the flowers because their desire was not to give something to the family. Their desire was for people to hear their name. Oh, Miss Betsy always gives a flower. That's how many of us are. When it comes to people patting us on our back, we are good with that. We want folks to acknowledge us as I'm the pastor. Oh, I'm the chairman of the deacon board. Oh, I'm the, the head of the choir. Oh, I'm the secretary of the church. Oh, I'm the treasurer right, right. of the church. We right. get caught up in the title uh -huh. so people can call us by name, uh -huh. but, but servant is the greatest of all names. Yeah. Yeah. Because what you want to hear at the end is servant, well, well done. done. Amen. Amen. All the other titles you can get can lead you right on to here because I promise you it's going to be a bunch of preachers, pastors, bishops, Evangelists and all of them sit in hell and they will take a whole lot of folks. I hear you, Sam. They're trying to lead folks on money searches instead of leading them on a path to God. My, my, my. Preach. Preach. 
I hear you, sir. First Corinthians 13 and 11 says, When I was a child, hmm. I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I taught as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Here we have Joshua feeling and knowing that the end of his life is near. He is the leader of the people. And he realized that he had. None of that is greater than the gift of God that he can give to his people. Mm -hmm. So as this man lays dying, he wants to make sure that his people are good. Not that they got some money in the bank. I can leave, I can get Tracy money right now. And Trey can already figure out how you spend it. <laughs> <laughs> I give Chelsea some money right now. <laughs> she's shaking her head because she knows Trey gave it, she gave it. <laughs> so she starts shaking her head, spending it right now. Don't leave Josh out because if, if he Come gets on some now. money. <laughs> He gonna spend. And lo and behold, I can't even leave my wife out. Come on, preacher. Cause she got plans on spending it too. I got caught up a few weeks ago. One wanted to go to a movie, and I paid for several to go to a movie. And I didn't even get to go see it. Oh. <laughs> I'm buying movie tickets and popcorn. Well, you bought it for one. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> the choice is yours. But here, Joshua decides that his greatest gift he can give his people is God. And it's at this point that he's near death that he says something that was powerful. As for me mm -hmm. come on and my yeah, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he didn't <clears throat> think about the pains and the ailments in his body. Mm -hmm. But at this point he says as for me yeah. and my house. Yes. Mm -hmm. Recognizing that his body is breaking down, but he says, as for me and my house. Yeah. He's stating claim on the control of his family. Mm -hmm. See, many of us want to be in control, but we don't want to leave. Mm. Mm. Right. Yes, sir. Say that. You got supervisors who ain't supervisors tell at it. your job. Mm -hmm. They want to tell you how to do your job. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody assigned them to be a supervisor. Come on now. Ain't nobody paying them to be a supervisor. Mm -hmm. But they want to tell you how your job is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. But they not in a position to leave. A leader is one that people are easy to follow. Uh, right. After Moses got Israel out of Egypt, uh, he couldn't lead them any further. Uh, he couldn't lead them into the promised land. Uh, it was Joshua who led them into the promised land. Right. So it had to be something about him that showed a leadership spirit. 
And that's why he can say, as for me and my house, uh -huh. we will serve the Lord. Yeah. He didn't say we might. He said we will. See, a husband who's really following the path of God can speak for his house. Right, you right. can't speak for your house when you stuck at the game on, and the wife and the children at church. On, See, that's why we get everything confused. We want to send them out to church and we go do everything else. Because we know they in church, so they ain't going to see our mess. My, my. The choice is yours. God told the Israelites to cross the Jordan during the spring. Well, during the spring, <coughs> the rivers began to sway. Our yes. child would say that's good fishing was. Amen. <laughs> the, the river's a little higher. The fish are swimming a little more. And he casting out reels, coming back with trophies. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also the worst time to try to cross the river. Yes. Because you have high tides and other things are in the water. Amen. So in telling the Israelites to cross the Jordan in the springtime, God presents an obstacle, and he also presents an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The obstacle is you have this big ocean or this river in front of you that you got to cross. The easy thing would be to do it in the winter or late in the summer after the sun is taking some of the water out or the winter, the ground is hardened, and it's easy to get across. But he told them to go in the springtime. And in doing so, God did something for them by parting the water. God can present before you great obstacles. Right. But if he presents an obstacle for you, he's going to always present the resolution. Mm -hmm. In your life, you may come across some days, or you may have some Goliaths that get in your way. You're going to have some Goliaths that get in your way on your job. You're going to have some Goliaths that get in your way even within your own family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the thing is, although the Goliaths are there, God allowed the Goliaths to be there because he saw some David in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My God. And when he sees some David in you and you understand who God is, he can get you over whatever obstacle is in your way. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're facing on this day, understand that you can get over it right now. Amen. If your obstacle right now is financial, mm -hmm. you can get over it right now. Mm -hmm. If your obstacle is in your relationship, you can get over it right now. Mm -hmm. If yes, your obstacle is on your job, you can get over it right now. Mm. But the key to getting over it all <clears throat> is trusting God. Mm. If you choose God, he can work everything else out. Amen. Whatever the problem you face, but God answers. Mm. I didn't know how I was going to make it, but God. Mm. I didn't know if I was going to leave. But God. Y'all might not wish to 
But I went to the club and they were shooting. Amen. 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 And I didn't know if I was going to get out. But God. But God. <laughs> so if you look at your life for real, we've all had some but God moments. Yes. Amen. Yes. But what I know is that those but God moments happen when I didn't have nobody else to turn to. When I didn't have anybody else I could look to for help, God was right there. And sometimes he puts us into a position that nobody else can help you. Mama can't help you. Daddy can't help you. Your friends have turned their backs on you. And when everything seems lost, God steps in and takes away. So I tell you today, the choice is yours. Yeah. Who you should serve. Mm -hmm. But as for me in my house, mm -hmm. and when I speak of my house, I'm speaking of Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Mount Sinai is going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. I don't care what had been said years before. We are going to serve the Lord today. Amen. We're going to be a Bible-based church Amen. that's going back and reading what the book says. Mm -hmm. I don't care what granddaddy preached about. My granddaddy preached, my great granddaddy preached, my daddy preached. But years ago, preachers couldn't read. Amen. So if they couldn't read, how were they really giving you the sermon? Amen. Somebody Amen. had to tell them what Amen. to say to you. Yes. So Amen. some of the stuff that was told to them to tell you was not right. Amen. It was designed to keep you trapped. Amen. So what we're going to do is open the Bible back up and learn right. to read it. Yeah. Because that's the only yeah. way to really get to God. Hear you, sir. The choice is yours. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you this. The easiest way to make me is given to us in Matthew 22, 37 through 4. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great command. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commands, and all the law and the prophets. Love your brother and sister as you want them to love you. And trust God. Let God be the head of your house, the head of you. Because you can't leave a house if God's not the head. Amen. 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 The doors of the church are open. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you.
me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I pray that something has been said that you'll be able to carry with you. I can tell you that the message that was wrote was definitely not the one that was Because what I may think needs to be said means nothing. Amen. Amen. What he knows what he Amen. Mm -hmm. Pretty soon we're going to have some bills. I woke up early this morning. I supervised a tent going out. <laughs> I, I supervise some ribs, <laughs> chicken, yep. hamburgers, hot dogs. I, uh, I allow my my wife and mother to use my recipes and uh, come up with some sides and stuff. <laughs> program later 